Finally, I want to talk about the independence of irrelevant alternatives. What this is, is it's a restriction implied by this model that we've put forth. It, the model is a very strict mathematical model, and, and the model implies some restrictions on how people can change their behavior, namely the choice probabilities, when we change characteristics or available choices, for example. It could be other things, but these are the main ones. And it's due to the mathematical structure. The mathematical structure implies that the pro relative probability of buying J to K may not depend on other uh, the, um, on the characteristics of the other cars. So, the relative probability of buying a Tesla relative to a uh, say a BMW does not depend on the characteristics of uh, say a tiny Skoda or some crappy car. This may be relevant for some alternatives, but um, but in particular, it means it doesn't depend on how many, you know, if it doesn't depend on the the alternatives close as well. So the probability of Tesla relative to the probability of BMW doesn't depend on what the characteristics of, say, a uh, some other nice car like a Ferrari looks like, and that might not be as realistic. I'll show you precisely how it works, and it can be. It, there are tons of models that solve this problem. You can add a nested logit on top of it. You can have random coefficients, all these things. Plenty of ways of solving it, but it takes a little bit more math. And and you can test for it. Uh, there are ways of testing, but I, I don't ever see anyone using those, actually. So, the model, suppose the model looks like this. Uh, the Z should be an X, sorry about that. Um, then, um, the, the, if we define the denominator of the choice probabilities, is this lambda thing, then that thing, this denominator is the same depending on whether we look at the probability of y equals j or the probability of y equals k. The de this denominator is the same for both of these. The choice probability is always the exponential of xj beta divided by and then the sum of all of these exponential uh, xj betas for, all, for the other alternatives. So those are the, actually the same for these two, so they cancel out and then we just have exponential fa uh, function of this guy over exponential of this guy. And the exponential of some number divided by the exponential of another number is the exponential of first number minus second number. And you can see that beta is the same, so it goes outside, and that's why we have this thing left. Okay, this is important. This is what I said, that the relative probability of one car to some other car, this could be Tesla and this could be uh, BMW, depends on xj minus xk and beta, but it doesn't depend on the characteristics of all the other cars that are inside of this uh, denominator function. So this is called the IA assumption or the IIA property of uh, the logit model. Um, and, and this thing here is called the odds ratio. It's very much used in sociology. They talk about odds ratios a lot. All right. So I'm going to illustrate uh, why this is important in two ways. Firstly, with a bus example. Suppose there are two alternatives, j equals 0 for red bus and j equals 1 for car. And then we're going to add a blue bus in a minute. The characteristics are price and time for these two modes of travel. And suppose that they are 1, 2 and 2, 1 for the two uh, alternatives. Um, OK, furthermore. Let's assume that the betas coefficients are such that half of the people choose to go by the bus. Okay, since probability is sum to one, the probability uh, um, the probability of uh, the other alternative. Sorry, this was j equals one, so the probability of car is a half, and then the probability of a bus is a half as well because they have to sum to one. Okay, so if we take one and divide by the other, and it's a half divided by a half. That's just one. Okay, now we add the extra alternative, a blue bus, called j equal 2, and we give it exactly the same z characteristics as uh, j equals 0, which was the red bus. So we've added an identical alternative. Good. What's the probability of this alternative? It's going to be the same as the original probability, because they, they have exactly the same characteristics. And recall that the choice probabilities is x beta divided by something. And it's the same betas, and when the x's are the same as well, it must be the same number. 
So it must be the case that this probability is the same as the probability of the red bus. Makes sense. They're identical in all the characteristics, so they must be the same market shares, or the same shares of people taking them. Okay, but by the independence of irrelevant alternatives, and by the fact that we have not changed uh, the true parameters beta naught, this relative probability between 1 and 0 must still hold. So that's the equation from before here. This one must still hold because it doesn't matter what this denominator is, whether there's more or less alternatives in it, it's going to cancel out when we take the relative probabilities of two alternatives. So whether we've added the blue bus or not, it must be the same. So hence, uh, when we have the probability that y equals 1 divided by probability of y equals 0 is equal to 1, we showed that before, then we can move this thing over on the other side and we have the probability of y equals 1 is equal to probability of y equals 0. All right. Now we know that y equals 2 is equal to probability of y equals 0, which is equal to probability of y equals 1. They're all the same. So they must all have a third of the probability mass. And this is not in itself weird, but the strange thing is that we've added an alternative that's identical to the red bus, namely the blue bus. And now the probability of choosing a car fell from a half to a third. So it's counterintuitive that we've added an alternative, a new alternative, a new choice, the blue bus that's identical to the existing red bus. How can it lure away people from cars? It should be taking away people from the red bus only, but due to the structure and due to the independence of irrelevant alternatives, that cannot, that's not how, uh, how the logit model works. So this is the, uh, independence of irrelevant alternatives, and it's a property that we're not so happy about with the logit model, and there are tons of ways of solving it with nesting and so forth. A different example, which also illustrates the independence of irrelevant alternatives, is again suppose that uh, y equals the car type and x has a price and the size of the car. And then suppose that only one car gets an increase in the price. So the price of car J, the first characteristics of car J, increases from XJ1 to XJ1 plus delta. All right. Then the price of all of the other cars that are so the k not equal to J, they are the exponential value of XK beta. These are unchanged. Nothing happens here, but down here something happens. Since uh, this is what we had before, but now we have this extra part that's beta 1 times delta. Uh, you can go through the math of why uh, it's going to say xj1, xj2, xj1 times beta 1 plus uh, delta times beta 1 plus xj2 times beta 2. And then we split out the exponentials. You can go through the math. But the thing, the, po the important point is that this term here times that term this part here is um or this term here is added to all of the alter car alternatives that are not uh car cap j so when we increase the price of one car it steals in the same way from all of the other cars it's not uh, linearly in the same way because they have to sum to one and so on it scales this thing here, so in some sense it's a nonlinear function of all this, and it depends on this, but it's in a similar fashion for all of them. And this thing that the problem that it steals the market share for all of the other cars in a similar fashion is something that we don't like. If we change the price of Tesla, it's going to primarily be stealing from, I don't know, BMW, some luxury car. It's probably not going to be stealing market segment from some of the tiny little cars, but that's what this says. So car J of course loses some of its market share, but that loss is dif divided in a similar fashion among the remaining cars. So it's not just the closest substitute that it steals market share from. And in that sense, IIA is a restriction on the possible substitution patterns.
that's all I had for you in this uh, online lecture.